Today is April 26th and black soldier flies have started mating in my area in southwest Georgia and I'm going to start my bucket composter today. So far I haven't done anything to it since the previous video where I explained the various functions uh, that the bucket does. So just starting from scratch from the last video. What I want to start out with is a layer of, uh, on the bottom here, of moistened wood shavings. The shavings that I'm going to use are, uh, they're like pet bedding, hamster bedding or something like that, just shavings of um, various types of wood. As long as it's not pressure treated because pressure treated has insecticides on it and we don't want to uh, deal with insecticides when you have a bucket full of insect larva. So the reason that I'm using the wood shavings is to act as a bit of a pre-filter for our air conditioner filter that is the main filter in this unit. Uh, I don't want to just add the food at the top. You really could, but this is a bit experimental, but I, I think that the shape of these shavings will help keep smaller pieces of food as it gets processed from clogging up the filter. And the filter will maybe kind of self-cleaning because the larva will go into the filter after small bits of food, I imagine. They will go into the filter, I know that. So um, it might not be a necessary step, but it's an idea that I have. And it, uh, it also, when you're starting, like we are from, from the very beginning here, the layer of wood shavings, which I've moistened by the way, will help bring the level of the surface up to the level of funnel so that it makes it easier. Of course there's no mature larva now that are going to need to crawl out, but within a few weeks there will be. So we'll just see. This um, just gives us a base to start with and something for the initial food scraps to rest on uh, when we set them in the bucket. I've also taken a few moistened pieces of stale bread, a little bit, got a little bit moldy, but I'm going to set these down also in the bottom. And again, none of this is etched in stone. This is just me experimenting, really. Uh, again, it's not mandatory, but I'm going to put the, the slices of bread down, which I, I think I said I moistened those because the uh, without the extra moisture, it's a bit too dry for the larva to process, especially the really small ones that I'm going to be adding today. That's just going to give me a base to add the larva to. Now the larva I'm referring to that I have today, I have two containers. Uh, this container has larva in it, which I don't know if you can see. They're roughly, not quite half an inch long, probably three-eighths of an inch. These were eggs that I collected off of the a can liner from a garbage can. Uh, I actually set this can aside and, and kept it a little longer than I normally would and the black soldier flies were attracted to it. Under normal circumstances you would never notice them in your garbage even if they did lay eggs on the uh, can liner as they did in, in this case because the eggs take four days to hatch and then they're so small you can barely see them for the first uh, week or so under most circumstances so by that time you would have thrown the garbage away but I left this out on purpose so that I could attract some and, uh, and it's quite easy to see the eggs on a black can liner and they'll tend to lay the eggs in any folds that are on the uh, bag on the outside of the can so this was a small clutch it was laid I believe on April 12th so they were laid two weeks ago it takes four days to hatch so they're roughly 10 days old so I transferred the eggs with a little bit of fruit and bread into this container, but I put it in a Ziploc bag so they couldn't get away and it would keep the moisture in. And um, uh, as you can see, the, they kind of turned the bread that was in here and there was a piece of apple and a few other items, kind of liquefied it a bit, uh, which is a natural part of the process that uh, happens to waste as they process it. So I'm just going to take these guys and scrape them in on top of the bread. It's got a little piece of cardboard. As I probably mentioned before, the larvae don't eat uh, paper or cardboard, so they won't 
they won't digest this, but just in the process of processing the other waste, they will tend to shred the paper. The paper will absorb other nutrients, and so they, they target the paper, but I couldn't say for sure if they consume the paper and maybe it passes through them, or they try to avoid it and inadvertently uh, eat it or shred it, I really can't say, but if you put a coffee filter, for example, a huge coffee filter in there, they, they will shred that after they eat the grounds. They'll target the coffee grounds first, which for some reason they love coffee grounds. And uh, I honestly don't know why that would be. very curious about that myself, whether it's the caffeine, because I can't imagine there being much nutritional value in spent coffee grounds. That's kind of an amusing thing. I've also got another colorful bit of waste here, which is um, that first batch, I should also mention, was, again, the first egg that I had found that year, that was the first day that I had seen adult black soldier flies that's of the season. Um, and that was a small batch of eggs on the can liner, probably 80 or 90 or 100 eggs, something like that, it's just a rough estimate. So that's how many of those larvae were, uh, I'm estimating it was 80 to 100, let's say, larvae in that first batch. This was a bigger cluster of eggs, and so um, I'm going to guess this is somewhere around three to 400 individuals. Now they're so small because these were laid last week. They're in a little bit of cooked wheat cereal. You can see a beautiful layer of mold on there, which I don't care about. Uh, I think they're going to eat well. Now, I'm not even going to try and show you these larvae because they're so tiny. They're, they're just maybe two or three millimeters. So I'm not going to bother trying to show them to you, but I'm not, you know, I know the mold isn't pretty, but it's really not important. It, uh, I think I might have said that they probably will eat the mold. Certainly anything that the mold is growing on, they'll consume. And one way or another, the mold won't be there in a relatively short time. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's important to know that um, if, you, if you haven't started this, then you may not know, but in getting started with the, starting a black soldier fly colony, in the beginning, you'll have to deal with some fruit flies, house flies, other pest flies that you really don't want to deal with, but they are attracted initially. They will be repelled once the black soldier fly larva establish themselves in a fairly dense colony. They will they uh, give off an info chemical that will uh, very pretty effectively keep other species away. Um, but in the beginning you do have to deal with some things like mold and, and uh, fungus and some things that are you know not pretty necessarily but of course they're part of nature and uh, once these larvae even this small amount, as long as I don't overfeed them, um, if I just add enough food that they can process it in a day or two, mold and fungus won't have time to grow.